Hello, good evening, and welcome to Panther Gymnasium at Parkway High School, where tonight on WOSN, we'll bring you a pivotal Midwest Athletic Conference matchup between the visiting Marion local Flyers and the homestanding Parkway Panthers. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Danny Holbrook, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here in this Midwest Athletic Conference matchup. And Danny, we've got, uh, th this game, frankly, could decide who the league champion is at the end of the season. Yeah, you take a look at both squads, Garrett, and the first thing that jumps out to you is the defensive prowess of both these squads. Marion Local comes in number two in the MAC. They give up 33.8 a game. And then you look at Parkway, and they only give up 28 a game. And typically on big games like this, you're looking for offensive power. But this game's going to be decided in the trenches tonight. It absolutely will. Time to take a look now at the starting lineups. First for the Marion Local Flyers, 15 and two on the season, and undefeated at 7 and 0 in the MAC. Their head coach Beth Strive leading the Flyers. Their starting five looks like this. Ava Unras, a five foot six sophomore guard in the starting lineup tonight. She wears number 10, averages 10 points a contest. Stella Hills was a 5'9 senior guard. She'll wear number 12. Number 24 is Chloe Ronnebaum, a 5'6 sophomore guard, averages six points a contest. Lindsey Koenig is a 5'10 senior forward. She'll anchor things down low for the Flyers. Number 30 averages 9.6 points a contest. And Hannah Rose rounds out the starting five for the Flyers. She'll wear number 52 for the 5'6 senior guard. Now for the Parkway Panthers, 16-1 on the season and also undefeated in the MAC at 6-0. Their head coach is Dan Williamson, and their starting five is this. Gabrielle Stober is a six-foot senior guard, the leading scorer in the MAC at 18 and a half points a contest. She wears number four. Allison Hughes, a six-foot-two senior forward, signed to Edison State Community College to further her basketball and academic careers. She'll wear number 10, averages 11 points and 12 rebounds a contest. Audrey Nichols is number 14, a 5'6 junior guard. Emery Niddles, a 5'9 senior guard, wearing number 25 and number 31. It's Paige Williamson, a 5'8 junior guard. And that's the starting five for the Panthers as the Flyers win the opening tip. And we'll see just how the pace of this game unfolds here in the early stages. Well, both these teams are, are, are not uh, high-flying offensive scorers. You look at Marion Local at 43 a game, and Parkway, they come in at 52 a game, so they can get it up and down the floor, but both these squads are cemented in defense. Gabrielle Stover brings it across the timeline after the turnover by the Flyers on their first possession. It's Williamson hands off the top of the key. Stover on a right wing. will back it back out to the high left point. Baseline drive by Niddle, goes out of bounds off of a flyer to stay with the Panthers. And Gabby Stober can do a lot of things for this Parkway Panther team. She can beat you off the dribble. She can get her own shots. She can come off screens, get to the rim. She's a multi-dimensional player, and if, and if the season stopped right now, she'd be far and above the MAC Player of the Year. She'll lob it in at the top of the key, gets it right back in the near corner. She'll rise and fire for three. Left it off the front iron, rebound. Grabbed by Hughes. In the lane, tried to go up with a shot, but she traveled with it. And that's what Hughes is going to do. She's going to give you those efforts on the post. She's a big-bodied girl who can get down low. She'll do the dirty work for you. A couple of different times in her career, she's had 25 rebounds. Had one a couple of weeks ago. So still scoreless here. 45 seconds gone in this first quarter on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Flyers with the basketball. Rose throws right. Handoff on the right wing. Unrasked, just inside the three-point line. Drops in the first basket for either side. And that's what the sophomore can do. She's their leading scorer, and she's not afraid to put the ball up. And you see her come off that screen, and she just nails it. Williamson for three, rimmed out, rebound. Grabbed by Hillsman. And the Flyers will run momentarily. Give it to Unrasked. On the right wing. Right elbow jumper is up and good for Hannah Rose. And just like that, the Flyers have a 4 nothing advantage. They ran that set twice now with that high post pick, and they come off that screen, and both the times they get nice shots, and they get clear looks, and they knock them down. That's a key tonight is knocking down open jumpers. Williamson drives to the window, throws it off, can't get it. Hughes the rebound, her put back blocked. She's fouled. And Allison Hughes will shoot two free throws. And the fouls on Lindsey Koenig, it looks like to me. And that's a big foul. You look, look at their bench, and they don't have a lot of size. They've got a few 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but she is the post player they need to have in there on the defensive sets. Hughes at the free throw line, a 6'2", senior. Misses the first free throw attempt, just a 50.9% free throw shooter. Here, when you look at Parkway and their defensive numbers, and they, like I said earlier, 28 a game. But here's the thing, Stober and Hughes, 
They lead this team with 34 and 23 steals apiece. When your two best players are giving the most effort on the defensive end, the entire team will follow. Absolutely, as Hughes misses his second as well, so still scoreless for the Panthers on Wabash Mutual scoreboard. As Ronnebaum holds it on the left wing, gets to Koenig, throws right to Rose, down on the block, high up and in. Chloe Ronnebaum. And you're seeing right there, that is the third consecutive screen on a Parkway player, and they are really hitting those screens hard. And when I say coming off those screens, they are coming off hard and getting to the rim. Missed shot by Stober, Hughes the board, tie up, and the possession arrow points towards the Panthers. Parkway trails 6 0 here in the early going. Lobs into Williamson. She'll drive, angle to the far corner, and off to Hughes. Gives to Stober. She'll cross over inside the three point line. Back to Williamson. Panthers will reset. Nichols lost the handle, stolen away by the Flyers. It's a race back to the basket the other way as Hillsman will pull up. Give to Unrast. Need Unrast between the circles, directing traffic. So we approach five minutes to go in this opening quarter. Ronnebaum off the screen at the free throw line. Ball's loose. Picked up by Rose. And the Flyers will regroup. Rose for three, blocked. Audrey Nichols got a paw on it. And the Panthers will run. Stober, Euros in the lane, lays it off the window. And gets the first bucket for the black and gold. And that's a fantastic job by that young lady. She realized they're struggling at a bit offensive set. So what does she do? She gets to the rim. And you know you're going to have an easy shot or you're going to go to the line for a couple. Flyers reverse the ball out to the right wing. Jump shot for Koenig off the mark. She's fouled by Nichols. And that will send Koenig to the free throw line to shoot two. And you're seeing Marion Locals running a lot of sets where they're getting screens at the high and the low post. And Parkway's having a lot of trouble coming off those screens. And they're doing a great job of screening out the shooter. And the shooters are getting easy looks. First free throw for Koenig is up and good. Now four of the five starters for Marion Local in the scorebook. Or on the scoreboard, I guess I should say. They were already on the scorebook. 7-2. to two. And now make it 8-2. Koenig, a 73% free throw shooter, buries them both. Gets the lead back out to six, nearly tipped away as the Flyers turn on the pressure just a bit. As Stober has it at the right wing, she'll step up for the three, off the heel, long rebound. Still on the floor, scooped up. And a jump ball points towards Marion Local. Yeah, Stober's having a little trouble with her outside jumper. I really like her length, and I, I really think that she needs to get to the rim, open up that offense a little more. She's such an athletic guard that she has no problem coming off the dribble and getting to the rim. Parkway looks like they'll pressure in the backcourt now. Flyers, Allison Hughes pokes it right back out of bounds on the attempt. Garrett, I'm going to say this, and I think our viewers at home are going to see this. Allison Hughes, wherever the ball is, she's there. She is really smart with her game. She gets rebounds. She knows where the ball is. She knows how to defend. She's a really smart player. And she comes from, you know, a basketball family. Right, her dad, right. Doug, is the Parkway <laughs> right. boys coach. Her mom, Lynn Ben Hughes, when she was in high school at Fort Recovery, a fantastic high school and college Division I basketball player. Her brother was a great player here at yep. Parkway also, yeah. Anna Rose between the circles, holds, gives to Koenig. She'll hold as well. Under four minutes to go, halfway on in this first quarter, and the Panthers poke the basketball at the last possible moment. It goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Marion Local. You saw Chloe Ronenbaum. She put her defender on the back side away from the rim, and they got the ball down to her. She just went off her fingertips, but she did a really nice job of sealing her defender off. Ball nearly stolen away by Stober, still loose, scooped up by the Flyers, drive. Thrown off the window, no. And a offensive rebound and putback for Koenig. Give her four points. Uh, Lindsey Koenig did a great job of going up high and staying off of the defender and getting the ball and putting it back in. 10-2 the lead for the Flyers as the Panthers trying to get something going offensively. In a far corner, bounce to Hughes. Double team stolen away. Hillsman back the other way on the right wing. Gets to Rose. Ronnebaum. And now Ava Unrast will throw right to Rose. 
Helsman thought about the three. Instead, Flyers work it around the perimeter once more. Ronnebaum tries to cross over. Left block, turnaround jumper, drops in. You're watching a clinic right now, Garrett, on ball movement. They're doing a fantastic job of making the defense slide from side to side. A 30-second timeout called by Dan Williamson. We'll keep it here with 3.03 to go here in the first quarter. A 10-point lead for the Flyers. And we mentioned Parkway gives up 28 points a contest. Already 12 here, just over halfway gone in this first quarter for the Flyers. Yeah, they're really getting after it on defense. And Marion Local, that is. And the problem right now for Parkway is it's just a little helter-skelter offense, and they're not getting good looks. You look at Marion Local, they're really running some nice sets, and they're playing under composure. And I think that's what the coaches from Parkway are going to tell their kids, look, just calm down. You're playing it home you know you're, you're, you've, you've seen these kids before just, let's just relax and have some fun and, and, and I think you're exactly correct that you know Marion local they got 12 points off really good looks Absolutely. Where, where Parkway you know has struggled to you know get a wide open shot or, or has rushed a shot here or there and uh, also somewhat of Parkway's defense. The ball just hasn't necessarily bounced sure. their way. There's been a couple times where, you know, a ball got poked in and Marion Local was able to keep it up, keep it in their possession, or, you know, they tipped the ball that went out of bounds. It just hasn't gone the way the Panthers want here in this first quarter, but still three minutes to go, and Parkway looking to put something together. Panthers hold it on the left wing. Williamson drives just inside the three-point line. Turner back to the basket and gets back to Stober. 2.45 to go. Stober to the window. She got the hoop and the foul. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, Garrett. Don't make this game any more complicated. She's so athletic. She comes off of that. She gets to the rim. She gets fouled. That's just that's easy basketball right there. All four of the Panthers' points coming from Gabrielle Stover. Mention she is the max leading scorer at 18 and a half points a game. And that ball won't drop in on a free throw attempt. Panthers shoot just 61% from the line as a team. So the lead remains eight for Marion Local. Two and a half to play here in the first quarter. Jenna Knapp in a ball game for the first time, holding the basketball into the far corner. Koenig, teardrop floaters up and good. Lindsey Koenig with six first half points. The ball went to the corner and Lindsey Koenig floated to the post like it was her job. She gets it and you talk about a nice jumper. That was easy. Stover off the window, can't get it to go. Hughes the offensive board for the Panthers. Back at the top of the key, middle. Runner, no, and a rebound, grabbed by Kader. Panthers give a little token pressure in the backcourt. The Flyers will bring it across the timeline, angle to the near sideline. Hillsman into the corner, wide open Koenig. Feeling it, drops it in. She's a problem right now for Parkway. They better get a man on her because she's doing what she wants to do in the paint. She's got good footwork and she's just finding the open spot and they're getting the ball to her. Koenig averages nine points a contest already at eight here in the first quarter. Ball poked out of bounds by the Flyers. And they'll make a substitution as Koenig will sub out in exchange for Allison Dirksen. You, you take a look at Ava Unrest and Chloe Rodebaum, the two sophomores are bringing the ball down the floor. But not only that, they're finding the open man, and they're doing a terrific job of pinpointing where that ball goes. And look, if you can catch the ball in the post, you're a threat, and that's exactly what the Flyers are doing right now. Deliberate offense by the Flyers. Haven't really had to think a whole lot here in this first quarter. 90 seconds to play. Hughes holds it at the left wing. Williamson finds a wide open middle. She'll drop it in. So you saw Mary Local do it for about 10 possessions, and finally they come down here and do it on the offensive end for Parkway. 16-6, the lead 10 for the Flyers on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Rose between the circles, tightly guarded by Stober. Throws left to Nora Eckstein in a ball game for the first time. She holds it. Tries to get it down low. Turnaround jumper by Dirksen. No, offensive rebound by the Flyers. Put back attempt off the mark from Ronnebaum. And then Hughes grabs a rebound and fouled on the way down. Well, they're going to they're gonna have to address second chance points because you can't let Marion Local, who runs a deliberate offense like this, get three and four looks uh, at every basket. You know, they're really going to have to address that. So the Panthers, with under a minute to play, have the basketball. So they'll make a couple of substitutions. As Niddle will take a seat on the bench. Tough to see the gold numbers on the white numeral and white uniforms, I should say, for the Panthers, at least for me. It's not certain who subbed in for a parkway. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. I believe it's Avery White who's in the ball game. She'll set the screen for Stober at the top of the key, working left at the elbow. Three on the way for the Panthers. Barry Hall. 
Paige Williamson knocks on the three. Shoots 30% from behind the line. Trims the lead to seven with 30 seconds to play here in a quarter. Paige Williamson did a great job of setting her feet and squaring her shoulders up and knocking it down. Stober the steal, one on three. Had it stripped as she went to throw up a shot with 15 seconds. The Flyers have the ball once more. Corner three on the way from Rose. Missed everything. Avery White tried to grab the rebound. She's fouled with seven seconds to go in the quarter. That's the fourth foul committed by the Flyers here in this first quarter. And as, as, as docile as the offensive sets have been, you saw some uh, craziness there in those last two possessions of trying to get the ball down the floor. The Panthers get it into Stober. Lost the handle on it. She's in a tough spot. Timeout called by the Panthers with four seconds to play here in the quarter. Again, we'll keep it here as they trail 16 to nine in this opening quarter. And uh, how important is it here, Danny, for the Panthers to either get a good look or, or get some points here to end the quarter? Well, you got four seconds, Garrett, and the rule of thumb is you can get five dribbles, you know, one more than each second on the clock. You can get across half court and get an open look. Now, obviously, you want to put the ball in your best player's hands, get it to Gabby Stober, get as far as you can, and knock something down. So 16-9. Parkway looks like they're going to be in a tough spot inbounding along the sideline deep in that corner on the far side. Well, you always want to get a screen on your best player, and you always want to get the ball going towards the rim, nothing away from the rim. So watch what they do and watch the set. I imagine they're going to start Stober in the back like, they, like they're doing, and they're going to screen for him going towards the rim. They'll inbound to Hughes. Stober at the free throw line. Runner at the horn. No. Rebound grab by Dirksen, and that'll do it for the first quarter. 16-9, Flyers lead the Panthers here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Parkway will begin the second quarter with the basketball trailing by seven. 16-9 is Paige Williamson. Looks to throw it in. She'll have it a backcourt to Stober. And Gabby Stober, the six-foot senior guard, throws left. Panthers working around a perimeter. They get it back to Stober on the left wing. Tries to isolate. Instead, hands off. Britton Bruns with the basketball. Leaves off for Williamson. Lobs. A little too strong. Stober somehow throws it back into play. It'll stay with the Panthers. Yeah, she did a nice job of saving that ball. Williamson had it almost poked away in the fifth foul of the path, committed by Ava Unrast. So the score remains 16-9, 30 seconds gone here in this second quarter. As Stober inbounds underneath her own basket. Looking. Lobs into the backcourt. Bruns scoops it up. Comes to the right wing, gives Stober for three. Errant, and the rebound. And a travel called against Ava Unrest. Stober took that shot, and it looked like it was gonna maybe ricochet in, but it didn't go in. And uh, you know, when you're, when you're struggling from the outside, the best thing to do is get to the rim. And I really believe that she needs to put the ball on the floor, come off the bounce, and go attack that rim. Stober. To Bruns on a right wing. She'll take it to the free throw line. Pounces to Nittle. Panthers trying to get it down low to Hughes. Errant pass taken away by Marion Local. Turnovers are going to really be a factor in this game, especially when you're only getting so many possessions and you're limited offensively what you can do. Top of the key, Rose now on the left wing. Gets it down low. Koenig wide open. Missed it. Got her own rebound. Put back attempt. No. Lindsay Koenig will step back to the free throw line to shoot two. Garrett, she moves without the ball as well as any player I've seen this year, and I've done a ton of games. She's really smart without the ball. She puts herself in positions to receive the ball, and then she's such a quality post player that it's a done deal when she catches it down low. Koenig's first free throw attempt up and good. Give her nine points. Her third point from the free throw line. And really, Danny Parkway just has not had an answer down low for Lindsay King. No, they're, they're going to have to figure something out because she's already met her average right now, Garrett, at nine. She's at nine and a half, and we're in the second quarter. Allison Hughes, the rebound on the missed free throw attempt. Panthers trail by eight. Stober throws left to Nittle on the left wing. 
Top of the key to Hughes. Stober with her back to the basket. She'll back back out. And throw left to Bronze. Stover with her heels on the center circle and 6.20 to go in the quarter. Gives to Niddle. She'll wait. Gives to Hughes. They're trying to isolate her down in the low post. Stober, and every time they do, Marion Local's fronting her. The last set they ran was up high, and it was supposed to be down low, but she caught the ball way too high, and she couldn't do anything, so she kicks it back out. Hughes. Stover posted up, trying to lob it to her. Poked away. It stays with the Panthers. Those are really tough entry passes from the top. You're going to have to bring the ball to the side if you want to get an entry pass from the Stober, and then she's going to have to seal, but you've got to force that man to come out and defend you, and if you don't, you've got two players on top of Stober. And they're making it as difficult as can be to get it in there. Lindsey Koenig's doing a nice job fronting as the Panthers get it down low to Williamson. Shot off the mark. Well, Garrett, out of bounds yeah, there on the flyers. when you look at post defense, the first rule of post defense is good ball pressure, and that's exactly what Marion Local's doing. And when they're not ball pressuring, they're just falling back on Stober. In the near corner, Stober hands off to Bruns. Gives back to Stober, sets up for three, back. Yeah, now that's a good set. That's a really good set where they took the ball away from her. She gets the screen, and then Marion Local doesn't close out on her, and she knocks it down. Trims the lead to five. 17-12 with five and a half to go in this first half. Ronnebaum into the near corner. Drive, right hand hook shot from Stella Gilsman at no. And a jump ball points towards Marion Lobel. Marion Lobel's still getting good looks and they're going to the middle of the floor and they're getting you know five and six foot jump shots and we'll take those all day if you're a Marion Local fan. Just like that right there, just keep going up. You're either going to make it, miss it, or get fouled. And two out of three ain't bad. Well, and, and Beth Strive, the Parkway, or the Marion local head coach, Beth Strive, by the way, uh, works here at Parkway. So uh, a little <laughs> interesting <laughs> dynamic there. But Beth Strive told us before the game that they needed to make really good offensive decisions. Well, they I are. Think through, through the first half here, <laughs> first quarter and a half, they've, they've done that. They, they have been fantastic on the offensive end. If they're not getting good looks, they're getting foul shots. And I mean, you can't ask for anything more out of your kids. First free throw attempt from Hillsman, up and good. Or excuse me, uh, Ava Unrast made the free throw attempt. Ava Unrast is a good looking player for a sophomore. She's got a really good floor game about herself, runs that offense and has a nice stroke. Panthers pressured in the backcourt. As Williamson answered at the high right point, Stober thought about the three, drives baseline, kicks into the far corner. And a three from Bones is up and good. That's that old fat mono offense where you run the baseline and kick it out as far as you can, find your shooter, and then you got to knock it down. Lead is down to four now, 19-15. Flyers with the basketball. Hillsman holds it high above her head, down low. Great ball movement by the Flyers. As Unrast has it at the top of the key, throws right to Rose. Rose poked away. Bruns has it. And we'll hold on to it. Might have had a... Yeah, she missed the run out. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I knew what you were going to say there. I didn't mean to walk on no, you. You missed the... Uh, he, she missed her big time. And really, for Parkway, you know, they can't afford to miss out on, you know, easy baskets here in the first half as they get a moving screen violation back the other way on Emery Niddle. Well, part of that moving screen is because Mary Local's playing really good in-your-face defense, and the kids from Parker are trying to set those screens to get anybody open. Nearly lost the handle on in the backcourt. Ronnebaum holds it. She'll fire up, and a three on the way. No. Offensive rebound by Koenig. Ronnebaum in the lane. Blocked, and it lands in the hands of Allison Hughes. Now you see Parkway starting to contest those shots a little better there. They're getting their hands up and moving their feet, not just moving their hands, and they're not fouling when they do that. Stober in the lane, it spins to the window, can't hit, and a rebound grabbed by Koenig. Timeout called by Best Drive, the Marion local head coach. We'll step aside as well. 3.46 to play in the first half. Flyers lead 19-15 here on WOSN. Flyers with the basketball out of the timeout. 3.45 to go here in this first half, leading by four in a big-time Midwest Athletic Conference matchup. Both squads undefeated in the MAC as an errant pass from Marion Local turns it over. 
Now, that's the first time you've seen all this half. And Mary Loka looked a little bit out of sync there. They throw the ball away. And you look at the score with 3.34 to go. And Mary Loka's clearly outplayed Parkway. But Parkway is, is two possessions away. Gabby Stover across the timeline. Brings to the right wing. Tightly guarded by Hillsman. She's chasing Stover wherever she goes. Bruns to the block. Williamson sets up for three. Off the mark. Rebound, no to Bruns. Offensive rebound by the Panthers. Stover straight away for three. Got it. Look, when she gets set and she squares her shoulders up, she's a deadly shooter. And that's two in a row for her that she's knocked down from the arc. Parkway trailed by as many as 10 there in the first quarter as the lead down to one with under three to go in this first half. Unrast throws right to Rose. Hillsman to top of the key, holding. Unrast puts it on the deck to the free throw line. Leaves off. Three from Rodebaum, missed the rim, but the rebound comes down to the Flyers, throws it back up. Kane the offensive board in the far corner. And another wide open shot for Mary Local. Can't hit. And Rose finally puts it back up and in. Four shots in a row. You got those offensive boards. Mary, or Parkway's really got to figure out to keep them off the boards. Mary Local rebounds so well. Panthers trail by three as Williamson throws it to the top of the key to Bruns. On the deck, Stober thought about the three. Instead, we'll try to get past Hillsman. Floater dropped it. That's what she can do all night. Once she starts knocking those outdoor jumpers, she becomes more of a lethal threat because they have to come out and close out. And she's so athletic, she goes around them. Two minutes to go here in this first half. Marion Local 21, Barkway 20 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone Scoreboard. Rose holds. Ronabon will put up a three off the heel. And a rebound grabbed by Stober. Yeah, she did a great job of boxing out Lindsey Koenig. And then an easy bucket in transition to the Panthers. And the Panthers, you hear the Panther faithful leading now by 122 21 with oh, just over 90 seconds to go in the half. <laughs> well, look, it, it, this is pretty simple when you look at this game. Parkway has the best player on the floor in Gabby Stober. It took her a while to get going, but once she got going, Garrett, she's really going now. She's knocked in eight of the last 10 points, and she's really effective on the offensive end. Now, it's a tough going there in the early going for Gabby Stober, and now has 12 points that we, we mentioned earlier. The leading scorer in the Midwest Athletic Conference, averaging 18 and a half. 12 here with still 90 seconds to go in the half, and uh, a nice resiliency shown here by the Panthers, where Mary Local hasn't really played that, hasn't <laughs> played poorly. No, they played really well. Now, they've had some defensive lapses the last three or four trips down. If I'm Mary and Local and I'm Coach Drive, I get them to run those sets in the first quarter. They were, it was just slow yeah. and it was methodical, but it was effective. They were getting such good looks, and right now you just need a bucket to kind of, you know, calm yourself down a little bit. Nearly stolen away by the Panthers poked away, but it's scooped back up by the Flyers. Koenig brings it to the left elbow, and a foul committed by Parkway. And you saw the foul on Hughes there, and that's what I said earlier in the day, in the broadcast when I talked about moving your feet, not your hands. If she takes a step instead of reaching out, that's not a foul. First foul committed by Allison Hughes. Flyers look to throw in. Rose to Koenig at the free throw line. Bounces right down low to Rodebaum, and she'll put it up in here. That's a great offensive set on, a, on an out-of-bounds play. You get a back screen. You get an easy bucket on the post. That's exactly what local needed. Gives the lead back to the Flyers with a one-point advantage. So we approach one minute to go here in a quarter. Stober, tightrope walks the baseline. Panthers work it back around the perimeter into that far corner. Another baseline drive, bounces to Stober for three, and the lead, no. Rebound, grabbed by Hughes, or excuse me, Audrey Nichols. Grabbed by Nichols, Mike <laughs> took an elbow to the chops, but she came down with it, second foul committed by Unrast. So the possession stays with Parkway. Garrett, how much how much basketball has Audrey Nichols and Gabby Stober played together? She's on the far baseline, and Stober's on the right side baseline, and they keep going back and forth. They run the baseline, but they know the shooter's going to be in the corner, and that that's such a confidence factor in that team to know that your guy's going to be there. Stober will inbound under a minute to go. Lobs into Hughes at the left wing. Gives to Nichols. Bounces back to Bruns. Britton Bruns at the high right point, takes to the top of the key and gives to Stober. She'll stand inside the center circle and work towards the near sideline, watching the clock tick 
to 40 seconds to go in the half. She'll spin, back, back out. Trying to draw a defender to her. Britton Bruns is back to Stobel with 30. Well, give Stella Hughesman a lot of credit. She's done a really good job. It's just a tough matchup for her. Gabby Stober's so good, and, and Hulsman's doing the best job she can do, and you give her a lot of credit. 15 on the clock. Stober hands off to Williamson in the lane. Back to Bruns. Bounces to Stober, nearly stolen away with 10. Stober in the lane, a turnaround hook shot. Got it, and the lead to the Panthers. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Flyers half court heave at the horn. No. And Parkway will take a 24-23 advantage into the halftime break. We'll step aside, come back with third quarter action in this big time Midwest Athletic Conference showdown next on WOSN. Second half about to get underway here between the Panthers and Flyers. I'm Garrett C. Rice, joined alongside Danny Holbrook. Park made with a one-point lead at the halftime break, outscoring Marion Local by eight points in the second quarter. As Gabby Stober has it, left block, right hand shot off the mark. Chased down by Allison Hughes in the far corner. Lows it back to the top of the key to Audrey Nichols, and the Panthers retain possession. Uh, you saw Marion Large, excuse me, you saw Parkway settle down in the second quarter of the first half there. Got some good looks, and, and once Gabby Stober got going, she was really a tough matchup, and, and uh, she got to the rim a little more, and she got to the foul line. Found by Stella Hillsman, her first, or her second, excuse me. One point lead stays for the Panthers. 30 seconds gone here in this quarter. Parkway 16 and one on the season, undefeated in the MAC at six and zero. Oh. Marion Local 15 and two, and seven and zero oh in the MAC. So this goes a long way in deciding who takes home the trophy at the end of the season. As Stober has it on the left wing. Both these teams haven't lost in a long time. Uh, the last time Marion Local lost was in December, and you look at. Uh, Parkway, their last loss was January 2nd, so it's been several weeks since both these teams have had a loss. Yeah, Parkway's won six in a row, Marion Locals won seven. Panthers' lone loss came to Botkins as a deep three from Williamson hits the heel of the rim. Rebound pulled down by Rodebaum. <laughs> that was on the volleyball line, Garrett. And it was on target. It was, <laughs> it was. She was open. Just a little too strong, which is uh, interesting from that deep as the Flyers working around a perimeter. Rodebaum throws left. Koenig down low, double teamed, bumped off the block, turnaround floater, doesn't matter. Lindsey Koenig drops it in. Lindsey Koenig is so effective in the post. She's got such a soft touch. You saw what Parkway did there. They saw from the first half, and they double teamed her in the post. Stover straight to the window, up and good. She's got 16 to give the Panthers the lead right back. She had 14 in the first half, and she was really effective in the second quarter. And there she takes over, and she gets to the rim. And I think that's the best part of her game is coming off the bounce, coming out of the screen, and going right to the rim. Flyers hold the basketball for just a moment as Rose has it on the right wing into the near corner. Ronabob to unrest. Rose just back off. Flyers reset. Garrett, if you look at this offensive set, they're letting Lindsey Coney get way too far down in the post. When she gets down that far, she's going to catch it right, just like that. It's too easy. That, that, that right there is if she doesn't make that shot, she's going to get fouled because she's getting such good position. Lindsey Coney goes to the line shooting two with the opportunity to take the lead back for Marion Local. So they trail 26-25. Koenig a 73% free throw shooter. The 5'10 senior at the line. Hits the first. You want to know why she's such a good free throw shooter? Because she gets a lot of opportunities because she has such a good post game. Now with 12 points. Make it 13 for the senior. And the lead once more rests with Marion Local at 27-26. Stober angles to the far wing. Tries to drive right past the defender. Instead gives it. Three ball off the mark, just short for Williamson. It felt like Williamson didn't have her feet set. She caught the ball in rhythm and it moved before she was even set and the ball was in the air. Flyers on the left wing with Stella Hillsman. Gets it down low, poked away. It's looking for Koenig. Poked from behind by Hughes. Now Hughes did a great job of, of using her body and using her offhand to deflect the ball. And she's got to do more of that. She cannot let... 
Koenig post her up like that. She's got to get in front of her. Stober between the circles. Off the screen to the left elbow in the high post. Three on away from Niddle off the window. No. Hughes pushed off on the rebound attempt. He gets called for the foul. Parkway's taking a lot of threes right now to start the second half, and it's almost as if they're settling for those shots, when all they have to do is maybe reverse the ball and you'll get a better look on the post, but they're taking a lot of outside jumpers. Hey, I'm not the coach, and I'm not telling them what to do, but I know how effective they are getting to the rim. 27-26, Flyers leading basketball with five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Anna Rose on the right wing. Throws to Stella Hillsman. She'll put up the contested three, left it short. And a rebound comes down to Ronnebaum. Flyers retain possession as Hillsman goes straight to the window and drops it home. Yeah, she did a great job of reading the defense right there, Garrett. She got a screen on the high post, and she just kept going, put her head down. And when she got to the rim, her eyes were on the rim, and in traffic, she knocks it down. So 29-26. Flyers lead now by three as Stober stands right at the center circle, gets to Hughes at the right elbow, now turns. To the block, double teamed, stolen away by Marion Local. It's a race back the other way that Chloe Ronnebaum wins. And that's how your defensive output can make easy buckets for your offense. Five point lead now for Marion Local. Stober on the right wing, backs back out. Gives to Bruins. Turns the corner, bounces in the far corner. Williamson, three, no. Long rebound, comes out to Hillsman. Flyers looking to extend this lead and the momentum here in the third quarter, halfway gone. Unrast spins to the window, wanted to hoop in the foul. She only got the ladder. Garrett, right now, the, the game is being decided on shot selection. You look at what Marion Local's doing, they're getting in the paint. Parkway's settling for jumpers outside of the arc, and look what's more effective right now. Marion Local's built this five point lead with a chance to go up seven. Free throw made by Unrast, giving her seven. And Parkway head coach Dan Williamson had told us before the game, hey, we've got to keep it out of the paint. Not, haven't checked that box so far <laughs> no, here tonight. No. Uh, Lindsey Koenig <laughs> with 13 points. And, and she's, to her credit, she's found a way to get to the area where Parkway doesn't want to let her go. Yeah, she's done a great job. And, and credit those guards finding her and, and getting the ball. Right there, Lindsey Koenig, the offensive rebounder, put back. No, rebound blocked by Stover on the putback attempt. Well, the Marion local folks wanted a, wanted a foul, but the Looked defender, like ball yeah, I was going to say exactly what I was going to say. Her hands were straight up and it was all ball. We had a really good vantage point to it. Panthers trail by six as Brenton Bruns holds it in the near corner. Williamson at the top of the key. Panthers in the lane, shot, no. I'll take that shot. You look at uh, the shot selection, and, and she's a left-handed shooter, and she got the player on her backside hip, so it was a good selection of shot. Ronnebaum on a run wing, under three to go in the third quarter. Flyers, Ronnebaum for three, off the heel of the rim. But the rebound comes down to Stober. Thought about pushing the tempo, now Will in the corner. Three for the Panthers is good. She had her feet set, shoulders squared. I said that in the first half. When she does those things, she's a lot more effective, and that really helped out that Panther offense upset. So trims the lead to three with two and a half to go in this third quarter. Flyers work the ball around a perimeter. Caning tightly guarded by Stober. She'll put it on the deck, poked by Stober, and a foul committed by the senior. Look, you, th this is what you need to know. Lindsey Koenig is not going to shoot the ball out on the arc. There's no reason you have to go out there and defend like that. Now, you have to respect her game, but she's not shot a shot out there all night. She's going to the post, and, and, and Gabby Stober needs to know that. It's the first foul committed by Stober. So Flyers inbound left of their basket. Ronnebaum didn't get it to Koenig, she'll chase it down to the backcourt, never touched in the front court. As Unrast holds it at the high left point. She'll bounce to Ronnebaum, straight away to Koenig, turns face of the basket, rows for three, no. But Hughes grabs the board and will hold on for just a moment, gives to Stilbert. And it's 
two on four. Stober doesn't care. Goes to the window. Fouled. She'll shoot two. Well, you saw what she did there, Garrett. She has the ball up top. She does a little hesitation dribble. So the defender thinks she's going to come off the bounce and take the shot. What's she do? Puts her head down and goes. I really like that play. Hey, hey, look, she's at, the, she's at the foul line. The clock has stopped, and she's putting up points for her team. Well, she misses that one. So Stober, the 65% free throw shooter, misses the front end of the two-shot attempt to keep it at a three-point game. I think we've got more people in this gym than what this game started with, Garrett. The weather's horrible outside, but there's a lot of people here. And I said earlier in the game, I said it wasn't a huge crowd, but man, it's a big crowd. It's a big time game in a map, and maybe some of the folks who thought that they were leaving early got here a little late with the <laughs> conditions of some of the roads as the Flyers get it across the timeline. Rodemond to the window. Is it a blocker? Charge? It's a charge. That was a tough call. That was such a bang, bang call. And you look at, uh, well, call was made. I don't know that she was in position to uh, take the charge, but she got there. So the Panthers trail by two. Not a popular call with the Mary Local faithful. No, right. Kicks in the near corner. Shot put up short. Hughes to offensive rebound. Put back. Hughes did a great job of getting that ball and taking it back up without any hesitation. That's exactly what she needs to do. First basket of the night for Allison Hughes, who averages just under 12 points a contest. Ties it at 32. Well, they've done a really good job of taking her out of the offensive sets. They've really limited her touches, and they've put a lot of pressure on her in the post. Hill's been stripped in the lane, and a foul called against the Panthers. Now the officials were going to say it was on the floor, but I think we're going to have a conference here to decide whether she was shooting or not. She was. Oh, I, on my sheet, I don't have a 22. I don't either. Yeah, I'm trying to find out who the 20, who 22 is, and I've got two separate rosters here, and I don't have. First free throw is up and good. Adrian Miller. Adrian Miller. So Stella Hillsman, who I've said I think three different times has made a basket. That's her first point of the night. <laughs> I've gotten Hillsman and Unras mixed up a couple of times. And she hits them both. So a two-point lead for Mary Local as we approach one minute to go in the third quarter. Stober pressured in the backcourt by Hillsman. Into the far corner, Williamson for three, no. Rebound by Hughes. Putmack is up and good. She got back to back buckets. She's starting to get a little more flex in the muscle in the post play. And she's getting those loose balls and getting that ball up. That's exactly what Parkway needs from her. All knotted up at 34 with under a minute to go in the third. Stober tightly guarding Hannah Rose. Gives left to Hillsman. Koenig in the post, wants it, doesn't get it. 35 seconds to go. Hillsman at the top of the key, Koenig, unrest. Throws to Hillsman, tries to break down a defender. Foul committed by the Panthers. They're sixth, so the next foul sends Marion Lopo to the line. You, you saw Allison Hughes there. She did a great job of man you ball. She got between her man and the ball, and the last time that Koenig cut to the middle, she kind of blocked her off, and she did not get a good set in there where she could get down low. So a really nice job by Allison Hughes of recognizing what Lindsey Koenig wanted to do. Inbound to Koenig, or excuse me, to Hillsman. As the Flyers hold with 15 inside the center circle. Unrass dribbles below the knees with 10, guarded by Paige Williamson. Spins in the high post. Euros off the window, can't hit. Hughes the board. Stober from half court at the horn. Nearly dropped it in, and we'll go to the fourth quarter, all tied up at 34. Barclay and Marion Local. Fourth quarter action coming up here on WOSN.
Athletics scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. All tied up at 34 between a pair of undefeated Mac squads. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Danny Holbrook. Flyers begin the quarter with the basketball, looking to take the lead. Britton Bruns nearly stole it away. Jump ball, and the possession arrow favors the Panthers. Bruns did a great job of getting high hands out there on the offensive player, and you saw what happened. Once you move those hands and you're active on defense, good things are going to happen. All tied at 34. Panthers steal a possession to begin the fourth quarter. As an inbound to Gabby Stober. Guarded by Hillsman. Takes to the right wing. Williamson thought about the corner three. Stober stands in her place. Brings back out to the high right point. Tries to get past Hillsman. Can't. Williamson the handoff to Bruns. She'll turn the corner. Floater blocked by Koenig. Goes out of bounds. Dribbled on the baseline by Rodebaum. It'll stay with the Panthers. I still like that set, and I love the fact that Bruns was able to get around the corner on that. And she had a nice vantage point. She just went up against a really good defensive player, and she got the shot blocked. Stober looks. Lobs to Hughes, right back to Stober in a corner. Contested three, too strong. And a foul. Yeah, if that foul doesn't get called, I, I really don't think I, <laughs> unless, well, they're making some decisions here, what they're doing. They're calling it against the Flyers. She was boxing out is what they're saying. She went, wow, I don't know, well. Goes against Hannah Rose. So it stays with the Panthers. Still all square, 34. Again, both squads undefeated in the MAC. In case Rose will take a seat on the bench in exchange. And I think that's a good move on Coach Stripe's part. And she was a little bit aggravated after that play. We're going to settle her down and get her in there for the stretch run. Nichols in the far corner, bounces back to Stober, between the circles, now stands inside the center circle. Parkway patient offensively as Bruns catches the pass to the left wing. Tries to get it to Stober, does. In the corner, guarded by Hillsman. Drives baseline, leaves off for Hughes, she'll put up a shot, can't hit. Rebound, grabbed by Rodebaum. Uh, if, if I'm... You know, if I'm telling her when she gets the ball, she could have taken a dribble and got closer to the rim. It was a nice shot. She had an open view, but just take a dribble and go to the rim. Flyers hold it above their head as Hillsman puts it on the deck. Leaves off for Ronabon. Next time. Sets the screen. Kading has it at the free throw line. Jumper left it short. Rebound pulled down by Audrey Nichols. Still scoreless here in the fourth quarter. There's a pass nearly stolen away by the Flyers. Goes out of bounds off the Panthers. It goes to Marion Loper. Well, it's unfortunate because <laughs> the ball was in a good position and she just let it go off of her. And it goes out of bounds and go back to Marion Loper. So the Flyers go the length of the court. The inbound. And throw it away right to Parkway. Easy pass to Williamson. Up and in. And the lead goes to the Panthers. They're going to stay in that pressure. They got an easy bucket there. They're going to stay in it. They're going to try to speed Marion Lowe up. Now they're going to drop back and just play a strict man. Britton Bunt runs guarding Unrast as Ava Unrast brings it across the timeline. Throws right to Stella Hillsman. Hillsman puts it on the deck. Leads to Unrast with 5.45. Parkway with a two-point advantage. Unrast thought about the three, tries to drive past Bruns, puts up a shot. Can't does swirl at home, nearly popped back out, and we're all square once more at 36. I don't know how Bruns couldn't have played any better defense on that play, Garrett. She was all over her, and she just did a great job of scoring the basketball. Poked out of bounds on a pass from Stober. It'll stay with Parkway. 5.21 to play on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Parkway looks to get it in. They'll lob to Stober. Back to the basket at the right elbow. Turns, faces, pressured. Is back in the corner. Bruns. The top of the key. Tries to break down a defender. Bounces to Niddle. Emery Niddle at the high post. Stober contested three for the lead. Mm, hits every bit of the rim. Doesn't drop. 
caning the board, and a foul committed by Hughes. The entire gym was waiting as, as that ball just kept bouncing up there, and I thought it was going to drop in. Third foul committed by Hughes, so Mary Local shooting free throws now. With 5.01 to go. And that could prove to be an important part of this, the, the final moments of this game. Garrett, it's going to be a real important part because of the way Marion Local runs their offensive sets. Everything goes towards the rim, and I got to believe that they're going to attack that rim so they can get to the line. One and one, Koenig splashes home the first, giving her 14 points on the evening. So a one-point lead now for the Flyers, 37-36. And she hits them both. So a two-point lead for Marion Local. Stover across the timeline. Both squads undefeated in Mac play. And a timeout called by Dan Williamson will take one as well. 38-36, under five to play in the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Got a great Mercer County matchup tonight between Parkway and Marion Local. The 15-2 Flyers lead the 16-1 Panthers, 38-36. Gabby Stover hands off to Niddle. Leading three-point shooter in the MAC off the mark. Ronna on the board. Nittle's been pretty quiet tonight. She's uh, got uh, two on the evening. And as you said, she's the leading shooter in the MAC in three-point category. Ronnebaum tried to put up the shot. Block goes right to Lindsey Koenig. Out of bounds. Off the Panthers. It'll stay with the blue and gold. Lindsey Koenig did a nice, or excuse me, Hughes did a nice job of locating the ball and getting her hands up and not jumping. Inbound to Koenig in the mid post. Blocked once more by Hughes. Loose ball, trying to get it to Koenig. She'll dribble out of it. Flyers retain possession with a two-point lead as we approach four minutes to go in the fourth. Trying to get it to Koenig instead, working around the perimeter. She had Hughes on her backside, and the ball should have been delivered to her. Turnaround, jump shot is up and good. Stella Hillsman, she's got four, and the lead is four. Stober straight to the window, kisses it off the glass and down. That's a great answer from Parkway. Stober needed that in the worst way. She's got 19 to lead everybody tonight. 340 to go. Nearly poked away by Britton Bunce, tightly guarding Unrast in the backcourt. Ava Unrast works to her right, gives to Hannah Rose. Trying to get it down low. Ronapom for three. No. Koenig got the offensive rebound, put back, affected by Hughes. Flyers retain possession as Unrast goes to the window. Fouled, and she'll shoot two. Yeah, Hughes was just a little bit late on that defensive set, and she makes the foul. And that's a good call if she had gotten position, but the, the ball was away from her, and she had to go on the back side, and she couldn't get there in time. 3.21 to go. Ava Unrast, nine points on the evening, averages 10. Looking to hit that season average here. Does. Well, here comes those foul shots you talked about three or four minutes ago, Garrett. They're going to start piling up. Every time they get fouled, they're going to go to the line. Unrast, a five foot six sophomore, 78% free throw shooter on the season. As Emery Niddle will take a seat on the bench for the Panthers. Unrast with 11. It's a four point lead for Marion Local. Stober guarded by Hellsman. Gives to Williamson. Paige Williamson. Foul. And that's the fifth foul committed by the Flyers here in the half. Well, Third on Stella Hilton. They were out top there, Gary, because they're so worried about Stober. And she was away from the ball, but they were in a, in a bad position to make the call, or to make the foul, excuse me. Stober. Inbounds. Gets you right back. Works on the left wing. Rises. Fires. Can't hit the three. Hughes, the offensive rebound, and a foul committed by the Panthers. Yeah, that was the right call. You saw number 22, Adrian Miller. She grabbed the, the, the Marion local girl, and she just kind of pulled her away from the play, and that is the exact call that should have been made. 
So this is the last free throw attempt that Marion Loco will shoot from the one and one. Next foul sends him to the double bonus. Just over three minutes to go and a four point lead. Hannah Rose hits the first. She's got five and the lead is five. You know, that's a big free throw now. That's a two possession game. Hits them both. Just a 52% free throw shooter, but coming up clutch tonight from the line. As Stover brings it across the timeline, Panthers trail by six. Williamson tries to turn a corner, shot, blocked, fouled, and Paige Williamson shoots two. Yeah, we said it earlier, you get to the line, the clock stops, that's effective basketball. You're putting points on the board with no time coming off the clock. In the position you're in, you gotta get, it's, it's a clock game right now. Unrast picks up her third foul. Williams into the line. Missed the first. Uh, you, got, you got to hit those shots. 83% free throw shooter. Williams at a 5'8 junior guard. Steps back to the line. Got it. Lead down to five. Under three to go. Flyers looking to get it in. Due to Koenig. She'll put it on the deck, sprint past a couple of Panther defenders, and now pick it up. Parkway faithful on a travel call, didn't get it. Flyers angle to the near sideline. Rose. Holds. Gives to Hillsman. Well, she's going to bring it back up top. There's no hurry right now for Marion Lovell. There's a steal there. Can't Big allow steal. that to happen. Big steal for the Panthers, trailing by five with under two and a half to go. Bronze leaves off to Stober. And she'll back back out, working on Hillsman. Gives to Bruns, thought about the three. Gives to Stober. Tries to turn a corner at the free throw line, balls loose. She got it back, put up a floater and dropped it in. She knows exactly what to do with it. She turned around and she put it up in the air and it goes in. That's just a shooter's touch right there. 21 points for Gabrielle Stober to lead all scorers. Leads back down to three, under two to go. Unrast working on Bruns, gets past her. Poked away from behind, Bruns picks up the foul. Bruns making her work real hard up there. She just got caught, she got around her. She tried to reach in once and the girl got around her and then she goes from the back side and they're gonna call that every time. So Mary Local now shooting two. It's Abel Unrast. 78% from the line. Makes another one, giving her 12. Ava Unrass has played a really nice game tonight. The sophomore guard, she knows exactly what to do when she's got the ball. And she's, she's a floor general out there for the Flyers. Can't hit the second. The offensive rebound comes down to Koenig. Concession arrow. Points towards Marion Local after the tie-up. Yeah, there you see right there, Lindsey Koenig, how much effect she has on this basketball game, not just on the offensive end, but loose balls, rebounds, second chance points. Both squads undefeated in the MAC. Marion Local 7-0, timeout called by Best Strive. We'll step aside as well. 1.43 to go, Flyers lead by four here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Marion Local needs Parkway, 45-41 after the tie-up. Flyers have the basketball with that four-point lead. Get it into Koenig. Bounce to Unrest, nearly stolen away by Gabrielle Stober. Tightly guarding. You gotta be careful not to get a five-second call out top. Handler, nearly a five-second call. Chloe Ronnebaum with the basketball. Bounces to Hannah Rose. If you're Marion Local, you want to put them in a position where they have to come out and foul you. Flyers continue dribbling. As they approach one minute to go on a Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. Nearly stolen away. Kanan, guarded by Stober. Just a two-man game right now. And you get it to Ronabom with 60 seconds to play. Foul committed by Parkway. Fourth foul by Miller. 
Well, they had what they wanted when Lindsay Koenig was up past the volleyball line, and they had her double team. She's not a, a great ball handler, so they had exactly what they wanted, but she's so tall, she saw across the floor and gets the ball to a guard. First free throw attempt from Ronnebaum, short, keeping it at a four-point game. Ronnebaum, a 75% free throw shooter. Emery Nittle back in the game for Parkway, the leading three-point shooter by a percentage in a conference. 35. Ronnebaum's second free throw attempt is up and good. Lead is now five. Ronnebaum with nine. Stober gets to Hughes. Hands right back off to Stober. She'll try to go to the window. On the block. Missed it. Hughes the board. Put back is up and good. Allison Hughes with six points and a timeout guard by Parkway's Dan Williamson. Lead down to three with 45 seconds to go. I like what they did there, Garrett. They didn't necessarily have to rush a three. They got enough time where they can get an easy bucket like they did there. I think what happened was when 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 Stober passed the ball into the post, Allison Hughes thought she was going to cut right off of her, and <laughs> Stober went on the outside. It worked out, but I think she was you know, going to hand the ball off to her on a real hard cut. So a three-point lead now for Marion Local. Any foul sends the Flyers to the line for two. Flyers' next foul gives Parkway the front end of the one and one. So 45 seconds to go. Marion Local 15 and two on the season. Parkway 16 and one. Flyers 7 and 0 in the conference, while Parkway 6 and 0. This game going to go a long way to decide who takes on the league crowd. Marion Local led 16 to 9 after one. Panthers storm back in a second to take a 24-23 halftime lead. We were all knotted up at 34 after three. And now a three-point game here in the winning moments of this fourth quarter. Flyers nursing the lead. They'll have the basketball, or at least try to inbound it, when we come out of the timeout. So what you're trying to do here, Garrett, you're absolutely denying the ball. You're trying to get a steal. If the ball comes in, you want it to go to the corner. You'll let him go into the corner. You trap. You try to get your steal. And then you've got to make that decision on when to foul. So three-point lead. Flyers look to inbound. They get it in to Hillsman. She's fouled, and statistically, probably who the Panthers want to shoot the free throws at 57% from the line. Well, they had her in the corner. I'm surprised they didn't bring another guard up to, to, to try to trap there in the corner and get a 10-second call. But, of course, you know, you're taking a lot of time off the clock. Stella Hillsman, 57% free throw shooter at the line, shooting two. Missed the first. So the lead remains three. Allison Hughes comes back in again. Well, this is where the fouls in the, in the third quarter really rack up. If she misses that one, it's, it's an easy rebound, but now she gets a second shot. Got that one. So the lead back out to four. Panthers inbound. Paige Williamson in the backcourt. Gets to Stober with under 40. She'll direct the traffic. Goes to the window. Jump stop off the window. Exactly what they needed to do, get a quick bucket like they did, but now that clock's moving. Panthers foul, Chloe Rodebaum. Partner, I don't know about you, but I feel like this could come down to the last possession. That's the first foul committed by Paige Williamson. So Rodebaum goes back to the line. Gaddy Stover has absolutely worn the right side of the paint out tonight. Everything goes that way. Ronabon hits every bit of the rim, drops it home. She's got 10. So the lead stays at three. Very important free throw upcoming. Ronabon's cool as a cucumber, drops that one in as well. Four point lead once more. Stober on the right wing. Williamson back to Stober for three to cut it to one. Got it. You gotta be kidding me. Gabby Stober from clear out by the volleyball line, Garrett. That was smooth, real smooth. Stober with 26, trims the lead to one, and a timeout called by the Panthers. We'll take one as well. 16.7 to go here on WOSN. An electric atmosphere inside Panther Gymnasium as the Parkway Panthers trail by one. 49-48 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Marion Local looking to inbound. 
It's interesting too, Garrett, that Parkway has no timeouts left. Marion Local has two. Panthers will foul Stella Hillsman, who went one for two the last time she went to the free throw line. Now, now what's the good thing for Parkway right now on that missed free throw the last time down and the consecutive three, even if she hits both of them, it's a one possession game. 15.2. Or excuse me, Ava Unrast at the line. She hits the first, Unrast a 78% free throw shooter. Ava Unrast has played incredible tonight. She's so cool at the line. That's 13. That's 14. So 15 seconds remain, Panthers out of timeouts. Gabrielle Stober, Stober along the far sideline, double teamed. At the right wing with eight. Niddle hands off to Stober for the tie. Left it short. Hughes the putback. No. With one. Stober for the tie at the horn. No. And Marion Local grabs the victory. Uh, that, that was a, an interesting sequence of events there. They shot for the tie and missed the shot, but they didn't get exactly what they wanted. Marion Local led by seven after one. Trailed by one after two, all knotted up at 34 after three, and they escape and remain undefeated in the Midwest Athletic Conference with a 51-48 victory. Panthers had two looks at it from three, and the final 15 seconds couldn't tie. And Danny, an exciting, fun Midwest Athletic Conference basketball game here tonight. Yeah, what a great job by Marion Local. You know, they, they, they grabbed the momentum early. At halftime, Parkway kind of seized the entire momentum of the first half. And then Marion Local, what a terrific job. They did a great job in getting the fouls accumulated and getting to the line, and they knocked down free throws. And they just, they're just they just very calm under pressure. And again, I'm going to say it, Ava Unrest is as good a guard as there is in this league. She's tremendous. She had 14 points tonight with 10 of them coming from the free throw line, and I think that's important. Marion Local hits their free throws down to stretch, and that's how they sneak out a 51-48 win for Parkway, led by Gabby Stober tonight. 26 points in a losing effort. Drug the Panthers back from uh, what seemed like, you know, a nail in the coffin possibility a couple of different times to even keep it close at the end there. Well, she's she's every bit as advertised. She's, she's going to be the player of the year in the MAC if things continue like this. And she's just a really, really good player. And look, this whole thing's not decided yet. There's a lot of MAC basketball left, so you know, best of luck to both teams as the season goes on. So Marion Local moves to 16 and two. Parkway drops to 16 and two for our fantastic WOSN crew and Danny Holbrook. I'm Garrett Seawright saying the final score, the final time. Flyers win 51-48, and we'll catch you next time here on WOSN.